Thanks for having us on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming in. I know that this is a giant weekend for you. You guys have better things to do, and yet we're helping you get the word out there to make it an even more successful. This is the fourth annual, is it Z Day? Z Day. Z Day. Well, I see, but it's Canada, so people say Z up here. Yes, right. <laughs> Initially, I had said Z Day in my head, and then I caught myself and thought, no, you can't mispronounce it. That's right. Speaking of mispronouncing, we've been saying z- uh, Zeitgeist that's, through the morning. That was common for many years. Oh, get some angry. Correct people over and over again. We get some angry people, some angry texts who are uh, uh, coming down on us. It's not pronounced Zeitgeist. What's the correct pronunciation? Uh, Zeitgeist. Yeah. Zeitgeist. Because it's a German word. And what does it mean? It means the spirit of the times. Basically a reflection of what the, the culture believes at any point in time. And hence the values that go along with that. It's deep, man. <laughs> really That's is. the nature of the Zeitgeist movement. It's a transition through those values and attempt to kind of sprawl, uh, excuse me, spark a new cultural referent, if you will, get people to think a little bit differently about the world around them. Uh, Peter, are you correctly or incorrectly uh, credited with being the founder of the Zeitgeist movement? Well, I consider myself the de facto founder it's, you know, to the extent that the idea of a founding. A uh, member or a leader has some type of authority to it, and I don't like any of those associations whatsoever. It's a very, very reciprocal type of thing we do around the world. So I refer to myself as de facto if people have to know how this started. Peter, you mentioned around the world. How big is the Zeitgeist movement? Uh, how many countries? Because I got a little bit of conflicting information online. 35 countries, 55 countries, well, all the, countries. Well, the, the event that we're doing is now stretched across, I'd say, about 45 countries at this point. But the chapters extend to about 70 countries. But we're talking about different gradients of size. Some have thousands of members. Right. Some have a very, very small subculture of people that are in small communities. So what is the worldwide membership? Worldwide membership is hard to predict, actually, because it comes in and out. But our ba- main mailing list is about half a million people, and it holds steady at around that at this point. No kidding. Yeah. Uh-huh. In what country or place has the most members? Good question. Um, I would have to say the U.K. has the strongest threshold of people at this point. Europe has been much more proactive with this type of view than, than anywhere else. What the hell's wrong with Canada? <laughs> I mean, Canada's, Canada's, Canada's been great, too, though. Per capita. Yeah, he can Unless there's a Canada. hockey game. Yeah. <laughs> right. Then we're, it's all up the were these beliefs and values, were they handed down from your parents, or where, where, or did you just come up with them, or how did, how well, did it start with you? As with any conditioning, it comes from somewhere to kind of open people up and make them vulnerable to whatever they believe. But uh, ultimately, I had my own intellectual pursuits from the age of my early you know, teenage years, and I started to study all sorts of sociological things. Human culture, if you will, is always kind of a hobby of mine, so I'm fascinated by religion, fascinated by economics. And as time moves forward and you kind of grow up and begin to realize the nature of the world around you with the kind of inherent sickness that we tend to see, I think most would agree at this point, uh, this need to try, for my own personal expression, catharsis, this eventually ma- manifested in the first film that I did. And then from there, it sort of take, took a life of its own as far as I'm concerned. And then extended to more films. And then eventually the movement came along, which the movement, by the way, is, as you mentioned in the introduction, conspiracy, which is a sort of buzzword out there. Yeah, the yeah. movement has nothing really to do with any of that. The, remember, the, the train of thought here is what's important about a new social system, even though those associations, t- associations tend to be there because of the popularity of my first film. A new system that removes boundaries, removes government, removes uh, uh, currencies and whatnot. Is that, is that part of the, uh, part of the, uh, well, the those are, those long-term are, uh, idea? Well, those are prima facie associations you can make to that, but it's really about a train of thought based on the sci- a scientific reference of reality, something that's been long lost. We have a whole dichotomous system that's completely unsustainable. There's, I could go through numerous points that basically are incompatible with what you call natural law or life systems. They, we're producing sickness. We're doing a lot of things that are very, very inhibiting to mm. us. And it's very obvious, unfortunately, that we have this, but yet most people, because of their conditioning, don't see it. And they're ingrained like a religion into the type of socioeconomic model we have today. Yeah, but, but you know, problem. not all religion is bad because it does provide people with some faith. You, you got to have you got to have some faith that there's something else beyond what well, we've got right faith here. Faith without evidence is this as good as it gets. You know, you <laughs> know yeah, I know. I, I hear you. Well, that's that's a great uh, that's a great ploy of religion throughout the years. You have uh, all sorts of your impecunious masses that have been you're, utterly sorry, deprived. Which, which masses? Sorry, impecunious without money. I was, or resources. I was impressed with dichotomous, but impecunious. <laughs> impecunious. Impecunious. Uh, right. I have to we look have that to up. use that so on the quick weekend. Quick, look it up. But if it does curb <laughs> some sinister behavior, isn't that a good thing? But I think, uh, well, if we're talking about the broad scope of religious belief, which is belief without evidence. I think it sparks much more destruction. That's what the, but that's the definition of faith: belief without without evidence. Right. The ultimate suspension of critical thinking. Yeah. Deep. 
<laughs> uh, I want to get into uh, some of the other possible conspiracy theorists uh, theories <laughs> out there. No, listen, and uh, you know what? And I don't. Wanna, we're not here to attack you guys. We're here to have a conversation. Right. We should actually have some beers and stuff. That would be <laughs> great. Have a conversation. Would you say? Uh, what do you say to uh, skeptics that uh, uh, feel that you guys are propagating fear? I'd say they haven't researched what we're talking about at all. all right. Fair enough. So, you because you guys had there was a movie. Uh, what was it three four years ago that it was it, it ended up looking a, a fair bit of nine uh, eleven and all that. And you guys kind of got the broad paintbrush of oh, well, Zeitgeist is just a bunch of conspiracists. Well, again, the the movement was sparked after the second film, which took a different turn than the original expression from the first film. It's a distinction that's I can see the intuitively how people don't make that connection. They hear about Zeitgeist, they go online, they see the first film, they've been to associate everything that we do looking for a new social system with the first film. So they think we're all about you know comparative religion, or they think we're about 9/11 truth, or we think we're just about you know getting angry at bankers. And that that isn't that isn't at all what the movement actually does. We got a note here. What is this? CKNW. Let's hear some rock and talk about beer or something. <laughs> 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 you know, Peter, I'm, I was very uh, curious. What musical artist falls most in line with your beliefs? Oh, interesting. Well, I grew up with the sort of progressive uh, you know, rock movement of, out of the UK, King Crimson. and uh, Wow. And yes, Call the Crimson King. Listen right. to you, throwing it down. And deep down and within a lot of that music, there's, there's a kind of a social edge to it. And I think that that had an influence on me. Uh, in, in the modern day, you know, I, 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 I actually still I'm, I'm still attracted to the, deri- to the derivatives of that. So you have bands like Tool. Yeah. You have uh, a lot of great music that's coming through with great intellectual capacity coupled with a great aesthetic. So I mean, I could go off a long tangent. I was a classically trained musician, though. So I'm, most of my background is in classical music. Are really? Life, yeah. Johnny in studio. It's Matt Berkowitz and uh, Peter Joseph. They founded the Zeitgeist Movement. Get it right, man. Is the mission statement the pursuit of a better world? And if so, why is it so damned hard to get that message out there? Well, I'd say because of the conditioning, right, Matt? I mean, we have, we have a whole subculture of people. Like, like I, I, when I say the word religion, I don't mean established religion. I mean, the economic system is a religion. This belief in competition, this belief in this social Darwinistic view, this sort of cutthroat mentality that the measure of success is material almost universally in the world today. Uh, this is a religious kind of notion. So, Matt, what would you have to comment on that? You know, when you boil down the train of thought, it's actually quite simplistic, although it's, it runs very counter to most people's uh, conditioning and their upbringing. So it seems, it seems complex. It seems completely foreign to them. Um, you know, when we set up at the Vancouver Art Gallery every Saturday, we talk to, you know, over 100 people every time we set up, and, and it's pretty much all positive. Everyone knows there's something wrong out there, but uh, they, they don't know what the root cause of these problems are, and that's why we look at the socioeconomic system that defines our culture today, and, uh, and we try to orient them towards a solution. And the solution, you know, like Peter tried to introduce, uh, it's, it represents a trend of thought that's based on global peak sustainability. Not the sustainability that's talked about uh, by all the marketing companies and corporations out there, but a su- sustainability from the sense of how would you design a world that optimizes our use of resources, protects the environment, takes into consideration all life on this planet in and the most optimized way. And not to mention the human condition. That One of the things we found in, in sociological research is that a great amount of the stuff that's happening in the world today is creating enormous amounts of neuroses and neurotic behavior and mental deficiency, not to mention physical disorder, too, because of the, the general processes of food and everything else. That's a long tangent I could go on. So there's really a core sickness in this culture that's slowly being, being understood, both from the physical and mental perspective. Public health is in danger right now, and I think that's what's started, starting to slowly trigger the kind of awakening that you see in the world that wants something different. All right, we got to take a break. When I come back, we'll uh, we'll uh, talk to uh, Matt and Peter some more. But more importantly, are you guys willing to take some phone calls? Of course. Absolutely. Right. Did you understand anything these guys just said? Zeitgeist in studio taking your calls because it's Z Weekend here in Vancouver. Open phones. Your call's next. Please hold for the Jeffo. Please. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Friday edition for Open Phones. My name is Jeff, along with Scott, Karen, and our special guests in studios. Is it safe to say that you guys are the founders for the Zeitgeist movement? It would be safe to say, wouldn't it? Just well, in, in some way, yes, yeah, absolutely. Right. The Peter founders is. of uh, Zeitgeist, we have Peter Joseph in studio and Matt Berkowitz, who's been here before. Welcome back, by the way, Matt. Thank you for having me back. We do have some rules today on Open Phones. Nobody from Kelowna. Go, you the Giants, go. No. Nobody from Montreal. Go, Canucks. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, you know what? I was going to throw out some weird ones, but uh, we'll just leave it at. We do have guests in studio. Please be on your best behavior. And of course, there are children listening. So for Christ's sake, don't swear. We have uh, some text messages that uh, have come in over the commercial break. These guys need to get laid. Matt, Peter, either of you uh, married uh, in a relationship? Uh, 
Doing okay in that department? Yeah. Doing fine in that department. <laughs> yeah. you're, a bit fine. Of a, you're a bit of a rock star, though, aren't you? You've had three films? or Yeah, like a forthcoming. Forthcoming. Mm-hmm. So when you go places, do you sign autographs and stuff like that? Unfortunately, that does happen. I don't feel comfortable doing that. But you <laughs> Do you know, sign any boobs? <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Somebody wants to know if you hand out a thesaurus at any Zeitgeist meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> it's like a thesaurus. It's a good idea. Uh, line one, Angela in Richmond. Go ahead, Angela. It's open phones. Oh, hey. I just wanted to take a shot at the one-second song. <laughs> oh, uh, you know what? I, I want to give you... It's, it's worth a lot of money, and I want to give you a chance, but that wouldn't be fair. So th- your next opportunity is with Neil. So even if, you to- even if you guess right now, we can't tell you if you're right or wrong. And just after 11 with Neil. Just after 11. Yeah. We had right. Clayton okay. guess... Uh, had like a hole by nine inch nails about uh, 20 minutes ago, which was incorrect. Great song, though. Uh, Mike, stuck in traffic, line two. Go ahead, Mike. It's open phones. Hi, I first heard about Zeitgeist. You guys were talking about it on your show, and, and Scotty was using it as a conspiracy type buzzword. I was curious about it, so I looked it up, and I actually watched the video, the, the, the movie, the long one, uh, and it scared the hell out of me because they're completely right. This is not conspiracy. This is accurate. This is what's happening now. And I think a lot of people should watch this. If they do, they'll probably lose a lot of sleep, just like me. All right, where can people find out more information if they do want to watch the movies? They're all available online, right? They're all available for free. You can either download them, download them and burn them, burn them yourself, or you can watch them. Obviously, well, how do you make streaming. money, then, if they're all available online for free? How, well, how very do you pay fortunate. the bills? Well, it's very unfortunate that uh, I still sell the DVD, but okay. even though I make it available for free, so it's, um, it's kind of a form of donation. If people want to support me, know that I'm going to make another film, and nice. it's, it's been consistent. Peter, are you concerned? Uh, the first movie, had uh, uh, Zeitgeist the movie, had over 100 million views. Then there was Zeitgeist Addendum. Uh, 50 million views, which is still a lot of views, but the uh, Zeitgeist moving forward only has 15 million views. Are well, you guys trending down? It's 15 million. <laughs> well, it's also a three-hour film, <laughs> and it's also not as sensationalized as the first film. You, gotta, you know, I, I understand where the first film touched a chord with, you know, because of its shock value that was inherent to it. But so that was a performance piece, by the way. It wasn't actually intended to be a movie. That's for another conversation. The last film, it being three hours and it being rather academically complex, doesn't surprise me at all. And the 15 million count is only for one post. That thing has been mirrored hundreds, if not thousands of times in multiple languages across the net that I have no way of counting. I suspect the count's probably doubled by now within the first year. Line three, we've got Dean on River Road. Go ahead, Dean. It's open phones. Uh, Good morning, Jeff, Scotty, and Karen. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say to Peter and Matt, I couldn't applaud you guys more for fighting the good fight. I wanted to ask you if you have felt any pressure from the powers that be to slow down what you guys are doing. Good question. Not directly. No, not directly. You, you have periodic strange censorship issues that will happen online, but usually it's the self-appointing guardians of the status quo that tend to get all bent out of shape on politicians, this. Politicians, you mean? No, not politicians. Uh, I think, Paul, this is what we talk about is far too complicated and far too... Uh, uh, rare for the political construct to recognize as a threat. Well, then how can this catch on? How can this, I mean, how can this be uh, the beginning of change well, if we don't get the politicians on board? You well, know what I'm saying? Well, there's some, I, I could, I know a few people that have seen the films that have been in the political establishment that were influenced by it. But the, you know, the change, I don't believe, they believe is going to happen to the political construct. And again, that's mm-hmm. for a much larger conversation. This it's is a grassroots movement. I have no confidence in the corporate or political construct. Well, it's not in their best interest to make any change. Uh, not at all. No. Are there any big names in music, Hollywood, big sports figures that are part of this movement? Anyone that's tried to attach themselves to the movement? We've had people passively and various actors and musicians passively come in and out of our event days. And like our last Z Day in Los Angeles, we had the, one of the lead actresses from Avatar and then uh, the guitar player from Incubus came. Uh, there's been people that have passively come in. I, Rutger Hauer is a good friend of mine. He's one of the first that appreciated uh, you know, Rutger Hauer from Blade Runner. Really? Appreciated my first film. He brought me to, to Italy in 2008 to show it. He's, I keep in touch with him. I okay, cool. try to do some collaborative stuff. Somebody wants to know through text message, what are your thoughts on fighting in hockey? Fighting <laughs> Uh, I say for th- for the amusement of it uh, and the sick culture we have, it's the best we can hope for. Sick <laughs> culture we have. <laughs> the best we can hope for. Uh, what's, what's the basic thing that a, a Fox listener can do to maybe they don't want to, maybe they can't come down and enjoy uh, Z or Z Day or whatever, but what's the basic thing uh, as listeners or as us that uh, can make a positive effect or a change in, in the way we're doing things right now? Uh, like a, like a, a zeitgeist movement thing. What's what's a basic thing I can do? I can pay for some old lady on the bus. I can uh, take all the money out of my, all the, uh, out of my bank account. What, Unfor- what can you do? Unfortunately, I mean, if you want to jump in, man, unfortunately the actions are much broader. It's an educational type of movement. You have to understand the world you're living in and be able to develop a skill set to communicate 
communicate that to others. This is a this is really is a, an expansion of the zeitgeist by its real definition. I mean, we are the zeitgeist movement. All of us are, whether we're in a, in a movement or not. We're in this transition of culture. And what does that mean? Where where is what is our role with in responsibility to each other? What does it mean to actually want to see a better world? And that takes on a much different level than say, you know, giving giving to the homeless. And that doesn't fix anything. You know, it's helping people in a minute way. We want we're going for the big picture here. Brent at work. Go ahead. Yeah. How's it going, guys? Good, Brent. How are you? Enjoy the show. Doing good. Doing good. I just have a little comment to make about uh, basically your your outlook on on religion and faith and that. Um, I, I agree with uh, your your concept of suppression of critical thinking because the, the religion has basically suppressed that for thousands of years, you know, by controlling the masses. And and basically. How can you how can you have faith in anything if you don't have faith in yourself? What do you guys think about that? It's deep. It's deep. I, I would agree. <laughs> well, it depends how you define faith in yourself. I mean, you're probably stretching the defini- definition of the word by using it the way you have. But uh, you don't you don't need faith in anything to have a positive outlook uh, as to our possibilities with what we ca- what we can do in society. There's, we have tremendous possibilities with what we can do. All you have to do is understand. Uh, that it's 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 a systemic problem that we what, that we face, not uh, uh, you know a technical or scientific or resource shortage uh, problem that we have. It's but let's add that the concept of faith, uh, point, going back to the earlier point, does implant a sort of a nugatory quality with respect what? to how nugatory. Nug- nugatory. Write that one I down. Nugatory impucin. Oh man. What was the other one? Impucining. Impucin. Impucin. Impecunious. Thank you. It, it has a quality that, that <laughs> makes people docile, which is why religions have always historically been great tools to keep the masses, the peasants, the subjects at bay. Us. Yes. <laughs> so it, has, it has a multifaceted <laughs> thing. So I, when people use the word faith, you got to understand their context, as Matt points right. out. All right. What, what's going on this weekend? It's Zeitgeist's fourth annual Global Awareness Day. That's tomorrow. What's going on? How can people get involved? So so the main event is at the Vogue tomorrow. That's Saturday. Uh, doors open at 11 a.m. And uh, the event starts at 12 p.m. We've got a series of lectures. Um, Showcasing any movies? Uh, no, the next day. Wet t-shirt contest? Well, well, one sec. Let me, finish, <laughs> let me finish at the Vogue. We have a bunch of lectures, and then we have a Q&A. That's finishing up at 6 o'clock. And In then time the for the hockey game, which is at 7. <laughs> yeah, we planned it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the next day, we've got a screening of certain portions of Zeitgeist Moving Forward. That's the third film uh, at Denman Cinema. Uh, doors open again at 11, starts at 12, and there'll be a Q&A to follow that. All right, that we've got passes to the event that's going on at the Vogue Theater. Is yeah. that what those are? Yeah, we do. All right, we've got a bunch of those. Thank you for uh, giving those away. If you want some, uh, just send us a text to uh, The Fox. All right, so you can follow them online, zeitgeistvancouver.com. You can meet them tomorrow at the Vogue Theater. They are fighting for a better world for all of us. Matt Bergowitz, Peter Joseph. Thank Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.